If you're looking for Madden 19 Ultimate Team coins, be sure to head over to muttcoin.com. Use code CLICKWID at checkout for an 8% discount. Hey, what is going on, guys? Clickwood here back again, bringing you guys another Madden 19 Ultimate Team video. Guys, today what we're going to be talking about is some tips for Mutt Squads. These are my favorite tips to make you better at Mutt Squads. Um, these are fairly easy things, and they're going to be things that can help you improve your game, whether you're a newbie at Mutt Squads or a relatively experienced player. So in today's video, guys, I'm going to be talking about these tips. I want you to implement them, try them out. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about them. I bet you'll learn something in this video that you probably didn't know prior to today. So let's get into it, guys. Let's talk about the tips that have me currently 50 and 4 in Mutt Squads. And I don't see any reason why that's really going to change. Uh, my winning percentage probably isn't going to vary much from that uh, unless they completely change the game and then obviously all bets are off. But uh, as of right now, I think that if you follow these tips, you're going to improve quite a bit. So number one, tip number one, pick a role and stick with it. Now, what I mean with that is on offense, if you're a person that's a good offensive player, you want to be the offense. You want to always be the offensive coach. If you're someone that's smart on defense, obviously you want to run defense. Now, what I will say is that defense is actually much easier than offense, so I don't tend to worry too much about who our defense is, but here's the deal. If you're the person that is the offensive captain, you need to be investing in your offense primarily. And if you're, again, if you're on defense, you need to be investing in defense. And what I mean by that is spending the majority of your coins on defense if you're the defensive head coach. And, and obviously on offense, investing in that offense as well. Uh, one of the main things that I would say is that you need to focus on stopping the pass rush and generating a pass rush. Those are the two things that I think are most important. Uh, no, so that means on offense, you need to be investing in your offensive line. You're going to see that the offensive line that we usually use is going to be guys that have secure protector. They're high overall. They're going to have great pass blocking, also good run blocking. And I think that is probably one of the most important things that you can do. You're still going to get sacked. There's nothing you can do. On mud squads, it's very difficult to not get sacked. But you do not want to have a cheap offensive line. It is extremely important to get good offensive line. I think it's more important to have good offensive line than to have good wide receivers and even good running backs and probably even a good quarterback. I'm, I'm being dead honest. Offensive line for squads is extraordinarily important. Now on defense, especially focusing on the pass rush. So that means getting guys like, let's say, a Jadavion Clowney or, uh, you know, your Bruce Smith on the defensive line or in the middle. Bryant Young's a really good defensive tackle. There are a lot of guys that you can invest in. But get those guys that have good pass rush moves that can get to the quarterback. Focusing on stopping the run in mud squads is not the move. Your defense is generally going to do a pretty good job of stopping the run with your users. What you want to do is make sure that your non-user control players are contributing for you. So we want to have good defensive linemen and good linebackers that can get in there and rush the passer. So that's what we want to focus on for offense and defense. Now for head coach, which is actually what I do, uh, you want to invest in a couple different things. Number one, invest in uniforms that help with your team's chemistries. So that is actually an underrated thing that a lot of people don't think about. You want to have uniforms that will um, you know, give you the chemistries that your team is focused on. So whether, you're a, whether your defense has got you know, pass rush or you know, whatever the case is, your offense has go deep, you want to get some uniforms that can help boost that up a little bit, okay? So think about that stuff, work with your other players, and get ones that work for you. Um, now, keep in mind, of course, that you don't have to actually have those uniforms show up on the screen. You can go in and change them visually uh, within your settings, but you want to make sure that they're equipped so that you're getting those chemistries, okay? Hopefully that makes some sense. Number two, if you're, uh, for, uh, if you're the head coach, Invest in the John Madden coach card. Now, what that means is that as you're getting wins, you're going to get these uh, these tokens, and what you want to do is save as many of them as you can. I've saved all of mine so far, so I'm getting very close to getting the John Madden coach. I actually haven't gotten it quite yet, but we're getting there. And what you want to do is once you get to uh, 200, you want to buy that John Madden coach because the John Madden coach is going to boost up your team's uh, ratings for all of your players pretty much across the board. 
okay? So that is a big thing. You can't do a whole lot for giving people players or anything like that, but you can help out the team by getting those uniforms, by getting the coach, and uh, that is an important thing. Last, if you're head coach, transfer your coins to the offense and defense. You have to be unselfish, okay? So you're going to see every time that I play mud squads, I pretty much have no coins. Um, it's, it's disappointing in a way, but at the same time, it's helping my team. And that's one of the main reasons why we have such a stacked team is we basically have three people contributing to build an offense and a defense. And so that is very much a, a, an important way to, to utilize your coins and get the best players possible onto the field. So in doing this now, you all have an offense, a defense, and a head coach position that you're running. You want to use three people that you're comfortable with. Never roll with just two people. Never roll by yourself in mud squads. You're just asking to be stuck with bums. Pick people that you've played with before or you know, pick a, a, a new group of two people to run with and just get comfortable playing with one another. You're going to learn each other's tendencies. You're going to come up with plays that work for you, and you guys will get better over time. You're not always going to just win every single game, but over time, you're going to improve. And like I said, you want to stick with one person running offense, one person running defense, and one person sticking with head coach always. That way, the person that's on offense is always going to be comfortable doing that. The defender is always going to know how to set up the defense Everything's going to roll smoothly every time. Don't switch it around. Okay, tip number two. Identify the offensive players pre-snap. Now, this one is actually something that I'm surprised not many people know. Uh, it really only works for mutt squads, but it is something that is an extreme advantage for your team. Now, I already know before the play exactly where the users are. It's not showing it with any sort of highlight or anything like that, but it's a very simple tip. The players that are being usered, if they're out at wide receiver or if they're at running back or at tight end, they do not have a name under them. The user's name is not there. So on your screen, who are the user players? Obviously, one's the quarterback, and that's never going to change. Now, where are the other two? If you identified the two players on the left side of the screen, you are correct. And when we run the play, you're going to see, boom, there they are, those two users running side by side. And like I said, this works every time. This is something that, as far as I understand, there's nothing that the offense can do to hide it. So the ways that you can use this, of course, are to know that the users are on you know one side of the field. Most people tend to throw to the user receivers, so that's helpful. But the other thing is that if you don't see users on the screen, so like for example, if all of the wide receivers have uh, names under them, we know that the users are actually on the offensive line. Now, the offensive linemen are not going to have names under them by default, but we know if there aren't any users on the running back or on the tight end, or even if there's even if only one is missing. Um, so like, for example, if, if somebody's on the running back and none, and then there's uh, no other users being identified on the field, so all the receivers and the tight ends all have names under them, we know that that user is on an offensive lineman. Now, what's an advantage for us here is that you can only use your offensive lineman on run plays. So if there's not a user at wide receiver tight end, if none of them are at wide receiver or tight end, we know it's a run play. Now, I wouldn't necessarily say to run a, uh, you know, commit on the run because there might be some sort of a glitch or, I, I don't know, you might have misidentified or something like that and you might allow a deep pass if you absolutely run commit, but what it does is it allows us to really focus on stopping the run and that's a huge advantage. If, if we know for the most part that they're going to be running, we can blitz our linebackers in right away. As soon as they hike the ball, every every one of our guys is running at the running back, okay? And that, like I said, is a huge advantage. So identifying the offensive players pre-snap, we absolutely can use this to our advantage, and that will be a huge help with, uh, with getting better at mutt squads. Number three, defensively, play your role. Run zone coverage of some sort, okay? So what we prefer to run is typically a cover three, 
and a lot of times we'll run this out of a cover out of a 4-3 defense. Most of the cover threes are relatively similar to one another. So if you run 4-3 normal, cover three, or you know, something along those lines. Even if you run 3-4, that works as well. Um but, you know, a 3-4 or a 4-3 or cover three are typically going to be your, your best bets. I like to have a four-man pass rush primarily. So if you're running a 3-4, typically you want to have one of those linebackers pass rushing some way. Um, but that four-man pass rush will get there eventually. Even if you're not using them, the, if you have good enough players, even against the best offensive linemen, the, the good defensive players will eventually get to the quarterback. So what we want to do is take advantage of that. We want to not use our defensive line typically. Uh, there might be situations where we do, but primarily we're going to be using the linebackers or if there's a safety down in the box or something like that, you can use or him. But stick to your zone. If a receiver is in your zone, he's your responsibility. You need to be on him like white on rice, my friends. And if he's not in your zone, if there's no receiver in your zone, what I like to do is watch for crossing routes. Typically, people are looking for crossing routes in Madden right now, whether it's a drag, whether it's a slant, whether it's a deep uh, crossing route. Uh, a lot of like the PA shot plays or the PA crosser plays utilize kind of a receiver going from one side of the field and then all the way over to the opposite sidelines. So if you're on the edge, if you're somebody that's using uh, one of the purple zones on the side of the field, you want to try and cover that as it's coming across the field. What I like to do is kind of drop off and then, uh, you know, I like to make it look like I'm not covering it. And then right as the guy's getting into the range of where the user would typically throw it, that's when I'm dropping off because I'm trying to bait that to get the interception. Now, if you're using a defensive lineman, one thing that I would say is that you want to make sure that that defensive lineman has jumped the snap. Jump the snap is a big advantage, um, and it gives you an automatic boost for your pass rush, and it's also something that the opposing quarterback is worried by every single time. If you get one or two sacks on them, they're going to be panicking, and they're going to start throwing the ball early, and your other players on the defense can take advantage of that, of course. Going along with that last tip of playing your, your uh, defensive zone, like I said, crossing routes are extremely popular. So let's identify the likely routes that people have on the field. Uh, like I said, most times people are going to have some sort of a crossing route, and that's going to be a main read for them. Uh, and also people are often going to be looking for uh, – out routes on like a third and seven to a third and 15 or so those routes on the sidelines with their with their edge receivers whether it's on the light left or the right uh, they will audible before the play and you'll see them audibling with their quarterback and a lot of times what they're doing is they're setting those out routes because the out routes beat a lot of defenses so if they're at, like I said, like maybe a, a second and seven, a third and seven uh, to like a third and 15 or so, if it's deeper than that, your defense will often make the play. And if it's shorter than that, a lot of times your your uh, your flat zones will intercept those. So people don't typically run the out routes unless it's like, like somewhere, like I said, like third and seven to a third and 15 or so. Uh, but if you're in those situations, watch for those out routes. And if you're on like a purple zone, like I said, on the edge, this is what I primarily play. A lot of times people are going to try and throw those out routes. And what you want to do is just get in the angle of defending it. You don't necessarily want to be right on it because if you're right on it, then they're not going to throw it. What we actually want them to do is throw that route and we want to cut it off midway through. So identifying, like I said, the likely routes that are going to be on the field is a big advantage for you as well. So if you can bait the quarterback to throwing the crossing route or the out route or, you know, whatever else they're, they've been doing throughout the game, that is how you're going to make plays defensively. So just like you would on a, a standard uh, Madden Ultimate Team game, a head-to-head -head game, identify what they've been doing and focus on stopping that. The, like I said, a lot of times people are going to have uh, their their check down routes are going to be the out routes or the crossing routes, uh, and they're not going to be usered. So if you if you focus on stopping the user defenders with a couple of your guys, a, a couple of your defensive players, and then the other person's following the out route or whatever other primary route that they might have, you're pretty much going to shut down every single one of their reads that they have. And that is how you make plays on defense, my friends. Now. Last but not least, on offense, there are a couple tips that I have here. Number one, the most the most important one, don't force the ball to your users. Defensive players will almost always focus on stopping the opposing offensive uh, users. So if you have a guy in a slot 
or uh, if you have the guy on the far outside, the defense is going to shade their coverage to stopping those those players primarily. Um, and so you want to make sure that as the quarterback, you're not just forcing the ball to the users just because you want to get the ball to them uh, because they're complaining that they're they're open, you know, whatever. You want to still make your reads, okay? And so what I typically say is that, number one, you need to always give yourself some sort of a check down option. And this is a non-user player. So... A, che- a check down option would be uh, like uh, what we run a lot of times on offense, and you've seen this in my Mutt Squad's videos, is a play called halfback wheel, and it's out of gun split close. We run it out of the 49ers playbook because it allows us to have two running backs in the backfield. Uh, most of them, I think, I believe anyway, most of them have uh, your right running back would be actually a fullback or a tight end. And that's not as ideal because we want that player on the right to also be somebody that can catch the ball uh, and have some speed to make plays after the the uh, catch. But if you're running halfback wheel, they have this, this RB route. Um, your right bumper if you're on Xbox or if you're on PlayStation, it's an R1 route. And this is, I believe it's called a table route. And these have been really effective in Madden for a long, long time. Basically, they're always going to be open unless the user uh, is there to defend it or unless they run some sort of a hard flat. It's almost always going to be there to give you a couple of yards. Um, Cloud flats can stop it. They can come up and, and make the play if you throw it too late. But the big thing here is that we always want to give ourselves some sort of an out on the play. So if if the if the users are defending uh, the post route and the users are defending your crossing routes and things like that, having a simple route out of the backfield that you can throw to is a big advantage. And you can flip this play and move it to the other side. Um, you can also throw it to the triangle route if somebody's not using that. Although the triangle route is not as effective typically coming out of the backfield, it can still get open. So, uh, you know, you can still make plays with it, but giving yourself, like I said, some sort of an option out of the backfield that's a short yardage gain, um, it'll nickel and dime them down the field. You don't have to pick up all of your yardage on every single play. And what it does is that if you throw that three, four times on a drive, they're going to be forced to take, you know, try and stop that. And you can take advantage of that by going over the top at that point. Um, If they start pulling their guys down and running a hard flat, a lot of times what's going to be open on the right side is that X route that's going to the corner that, uh, that corner X route that gets open like 15 to 20 yards down the field. And that's a big, big play for you. So keep that stuff in mind, guys. Think about what the defense is going to be doing. And like I said, don't force it to the users, because if you force it to them, they're just going to cover those users every single time. Another thing on offense, don't drop back too far. Um, this one is something that you can utilize in any Madden, of course, but it's really common in mutt squads that people drop back very, very far. Even experienced players, for some reason, they're trying to look at the users there because they don't know exactly where their wide receivers are going to be. Because, you know, if you're a user wide receiver, you're not going to always follow the route exactly as it's drawn up on the play. So what people do is they're not expecting the users to be at certain places on the field. They have to read three user defenders. Um, you know, there's a lot of different reasons, but what they end up doing is just by accident, dropping back too far. So you want to focus on trying to stay in the pocket. And like I said, primarily that actually means not dropping back too far. Um, You can scramble to the right or to the left if you need to, but I would almost always recommend sticking in that pocket as much as you can. Uh, If you do want to take off, make sure that you have a running quarterback, whether it's Mike Vick, whether it's Cam Newton, whoever it is, there's going to be better quarterbacks as well throughout the game, whether it's Randall Cunningham or whoever comes in to Madden Ultimate Team. Um, but the big thing is, I would say give yourself some sort of a scrambling quarterback, somebody that can run the football, and that just makes it so that the defense has to focus on that as well. Um, you don't want to make plays worse than they have to be. So like if you, like I said, if you continue to drop back too far, you're going to get sacked deep, and that's never good. So if you use a, a mobile quarterback, a lot of times you can kind of almost take advantage of that. You can drop back relatively far and then take off and actually run with your quarterbacks. That's something that you can think about doing. But I always would recommend trying to stick in that pocket as much as you can. So if the defense starts to focus in on 
stopping your running quarterback. And a lot of times, as soon as they see Mike Vick, they're putting a spy out, out there out there on the field. And a lot of times that spy is going to actually be a defensive lineman. So if they're running a 4-3 defense and they spy a defensive lineman, that actually means that they only have three down linemen. And a lot of times that allows you to run the ball more effectively as well with your running back. So keep that stuff in mind as well. Look what the defense is doing and try to identify it. Um, but I mean, running on offense, um, just in general, being the quarterback is the hardest thing in mutt squads without question. So try not to get too upset at your quarterback when he makes a bad read, uh, especially mid game after the fact, you can go back and talk about it. But during the game, try not to get too upset at the quarterback, because like I said, it is extremely difficult and you don't want to put that quarterback on tilt. You don't want him to be freaking out and uh, thinking that they're not making the right reads, things like that, because that just makes, like I said, a bad thing worse. So uh, yeah, just try and be as good of a teammate as you can. That's always a big thing. Uh, be encouraging, of course. Those things are important. But uh, if you're on offense, just do your best. Try not to force the ball to your users. Try to stick in the pocket. Do as best as you can with that. Um, and, and also, like I said, uh, with the with the second tip, identifying the offensive player's pre-snap. If the defense knows how to do that, you have to take advantage of that or at least not give them an obvious um, indication that you're running because if you're if you put your users on the offensive line and they know again that you're uh, running the football, they're just going to sell out on the run and you're not going to be able to run the ball at all. So typically my recommendation is to stick as a receiver or a tight end on pretty much every single play or a running back. Um, and so that way, you know, for a fact that they're not going to know that you're running the football They're They might have an indication based on the down and distance, but they're never going to be 100% certain that you're running it. If you're on a receiver or a running back or a tight end. So there you go, guys. Those are the offensive plays. Those are my five tips for getting better at mutt squads. There are a lot of other things that I can help you out with guys. Uh, if you have questions about mutt squads, of course, let me know in the comments section below. But hopefully these tips are helpful for you. Hopefully they'll help you get better. Like I said, I'm not a great player in Madden. I mean, I'm a, an above average player probably, but that doesn't mean that I should be going 50 and four in Mutt squads. And obviously I'm playing with really good people. Uh, Madden 12 Mutt team is one of the better players. Uh, Ryan's obviously a good player as well, but we're not professional players yet. We still have like a 10 to one win loss ratio. So you can see if you take these tips and utilize them, you will get better at Mutt squads. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you drop a like on it. Subscribe to the channel if you are new, and I will talk to you guys again soon.